Hey guys! So today I felt like doing a kind of a different video and I wanted to share with you guys my top 10 binge worthy shows to watch right now. These are just shows that I've been obsessed with forever and I am such like a nerdy crazy person that... Harley, come here. These are some of my favorite shows that I wanted to share with you guys. There you go, you fuckhead. For number 10, it's a classic. Um, honestly, my boy fiance got me hooked on them. Um, it's South Park. It's either you love South Park or you don't love South Park, and I literally love South Park. So many people think that South Park's just ridiculous, you know, and it's like all these kids saying cuss words. But honestly, um, it's a really smart comedy if you really watch the shows and you understand everything. Um, I just love it. Um, it's just funny. It's about, you know, a group of... Holy shit. Ah, kitten! Ouch! Group of uh, fourth graders that are friends and they go on adventures and stuff. Super fun series, you gotta watch them and it's pretty crazy because they have a million seasons of it. So it'll keep you busy for a long time if you just like background noise. Number nine is Scrubs. And you might say, Scrubs is old, like why, and blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, I love Scrubs because it's kind of the same thing as South Park. It's just something fun to watch and you just throw it on and just binge watch it over and over again. Scrubs is about a doctor basically. Well, he's going from his residency and he's interning and he goes all the way up to being a doctor. And it's just funny humor, JD and his best friend Turk. And they're real best friends in, in real life. So that's so funny, but yeah. And it's just all their adventures and their craziness. And uh, he's always in his head and he's always thinking of these funny scenarios as what's, of what's happening in his own mind. He's always daydreaming and, and there's just funny stuff and then there's serious stuff. But um, for the majority, it's just good fun and, uh, and I love watching it. It's just a good show to always watch. Watch your kitten butt. Number eight on my list is Dexter. That's a series that I was really obsessed with. Um, it's basically about a serial killer that's a good guy. His name is Dexter Morgan. He works um, Miami Forensics Department. He's a blood splatter analyst and um, he kills the bad guys that they can't catch or he kills the bad guys when he figures out who they are first. He loves blood, hence the blood splatter analyst. Um, and it's just, it's a total anti-hero show where you're rooting for him the whole time. Um, along with a great cast, his sister uh, is played, her name's Deb, and she's played by um, Jennifer Carpenter, and she's great in it. And she's just a, she's like me, she just cusses all the time, she's funny, she's a cop. And uh, it's just a great show. Um, it went on for about seven seasons. I don't really like the finale, to be honest with you, but I just pretend it never happened. Other than that, I really love the series, I love the character, and uh, it's great. A lot of crazy shit happens, and I recommend, for sure, watch it up until um, John Lithgow is in it. Um, he's amazing, and you just, I'm not gonna blow anything, just watch it and trust me. Number seven is True Blood. True Blood is a TV show on HBO, and it's based off of the Suki Stockhouse novels. I'm actually reading those right now. It's a bit different than the show, which is always great, because then you don't know exactly what's going on. And from what I've been told, the, the ending is different than it is in the book. So if you've read the book, still give the show a try because it's different and um, it's exciting. But basically it's about this girl, Suki Stockhouse, she lives in Louisiana. And uh, she's a telepath and she can read minds. She lives in this small little town and she can read everybody's minds so she can't date and she has all, this, all these problems with men because she can hear what they're thinking and men are not always great thinking the best things. Vampires come out of the coffin and reveal themselves to the public because of this new drink called True Blood, which vampires can drink and it synthesizes them drinking blood. So they don't have to drink humans anymore. So basically they come out of the coffin and she ends up meeting this man named Bill Compton at Merlot's where she works and she can't read vampires' minds. Hence, they fall in love. It's great, it's bloody, it's gory, there's sex, there's naked people, there's epic battles, and just, it's awesome. I made a spoof, actually, photography. I, I was working on a little project, and I spoofed True Blood myself, and uh, I dressed up as Lorena, it was pretty awesome. But definitely binge watch them. I have them all on DVD if you would like to come over and watch them. Number six is one that I feel like everybody's obsessed with right now. It's Game of Thrones. You can't not hear about Game of Thrones. It's everywhere. Basically a time piece where it's 
just craziness. There's everybody wants the Iron Throne. The king died. There's an illegitimate king type of situation. He's a kid. He's an asshole. There's all these different places and people who believe you know they should be the king of the Seven Kingdoms. It's a bunch of people trying to kill each other all the time. George R. R. Martin's who wrote the books. Um, I haven't read the books myself, so I don't know what's coming or anything, but he basically is known for killing off like half of his characters. So it's kind of like The Walking Dead where you don't know who's safe, who's gonna die. If you like a character, you maybe don't wanna like that character because you never know what's gonna happen to them. Um, but it's an interesting show. There's dragons, there's war, there's a lot of sex, there's wieners, like in South Park. Um, there's just a ton of shit going on and winter is coming and you should just watch it and give it a try. I'm not a, personally, I don't like time period pieces at all. Like I don't like anything medieval and, and that's just not really my thing. Like playing Skyrim was a lot for me because it's kind of in that era and the dragons and everything. I've just never been into that. But Game of Thrones is different. It's awesome. Watch it. Believe me, trust me. Number five is uh, on the lighter note, now that we've been on the kill, 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 kill note, um, is Orange is the New Black. It's a Netflix original series. They're only on, they're gonna be on the third season this next season, so you still have time to catch up on it. It's basically about this woman named Piper, and it's based on a true story. It's based on a book that this woman, Piper, wrote. And she, en she ends up going to jail because, you know, laundered drug money <laughs> for her girlfriend. It was 10 years ago when she did this crime that she kind of got talked into because of love or whatever reasons. And she's just a normal, you know, 20 something year old girl. She's engaged to the guy from American Pie, Jason Biggs. And um, she finds out all of a sudden she's gonna go to jail because of what happened. Um, somebody, and she believes it's her girlfriend, you know, ratted on her. So now she's gotta go to jail and she's not suitable for jail. So we kind of see this process through prison. You get to know all these stories of the women that she's around. And what I love about the show is you learn their backstories as like the episodes progress. So you're like, oh, I wonder why Red's in here, you know? And then you kind of watch the, the episodes and you learn little bits and pieces. They do flashbacks from before they were in jail and everything. So it's really interesting. Um, I love it. It's addicting. It's, it's funny. It's dark. It's real. And I just love every single character on that show. Definitely check that out. It's on my top right now. I can't wait for season three. It's going to be great. Number four is a series that I am currently watching. I have not watched the full thing. I know gasps, screams. It is Breaking Bad. Um, me and my fiance are in the middle of the Netflix right now. I don't remember what series we're on, what season we're on. I want to say three or four. It's this man and he's a teacher. He's a chemist. He's a chemistry teacher and he finds out that he has cancer and he doesn't make much money. He's struggling. He's working at a He's working at a car wash, like he's trying to, you know, make money for his family. His wife's pregnant and his son has um, MS, I believe. So he wants to be able to provide for his family and it just, a bunch of crazy shit happens and he ends up cooking meth. <laughs> yes, just cooking meth. He ends up being friends with one of his old students that was a chemistry class who was, you know, dealing meth. So they kind of combine forces and become this team and it's just craziness and it's just he's going through cancer and his wife's wondering where he is and it's just all this drama. Um, lots of crazy shit happens in the show. Um, I don't really want to dive too deep into it. Definitely recommend Breaking Bad. Now I understand why they won all those awards. Number three is a show that I kind of recently in the last couple months binge watched the shit out of. It's American Horror Story. It's crazy. The first season I saw was Asylum. I just immediately got hooked on this show. Um, it's not for the faint of heart if you don't like horror, if you don't like like blood, guts, and gore, and gritty, dirty, dungeon-y themes. I would not recommend watching American Horror Story, but if you do, it's great. I just love it because coming from photography and videography side of my life, they do so many crazy camera angles and colors, and they just, they just break all the rules in this show. And you get a t you get addicted to the characters and trying to figure out their story and why they're doing the things they're doing and what is going on. And basically, Asylum, you're following, you know, a mental asylum in the 60s, I believe, or 50s. And it's just, you know, you it's like Orange is the New Black where you're learning all these people's stories. Why they're in the mental institution, you know. There's four seasons of that, five seasons. Freak Show was the last one and we just watched. Um, I think every single season is great. I've been hooked on every single one. After Asylum, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be interested in the other ones because every season it's a totally different story. There's a lot of the same cast, 
like completely different storylines, completely different everything. So it's kind of interesting, like watching a season and then you're like, oh, I wonder what they're going to be next season because they can be something totally different. Um, like there's Lana from Asylum and she's a reporter and she's a journalist and she's just a beautiful woman and all this stuff. Yet in Freak Show, she's two, she has two heads and she's a conjoined twin. You know, so you, there's no consistency whatsoever, although there's recently been told that they're all connected somehow. So that's a really cool thought. But yeah, there's Coven, there's Murder House, which I took a picture in front of Murder House recently. I was in the neighborhood and I had to go check it out. Um, so there's Murder House, there's Coven, there's Asylum, and there's Freak Show, and next is going to be Hotel. So get on the American Horror Story stuff while you can. I can't believe I didn't watch it sooner. I love that show. Binge watched it like no other. So recommend it completely. Number two for me is something I'm obsessed with, and I'm pretty sure if you guys have seen me on Twitter and Instagram and stuff, you know I'm obsessed with it. And that is The Walking Dead. It is pretty much the number one show in America right now. Everybody is is dying, <laughs> pun intended, to see what's happening on the season finale tomorrow night. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, the season five finale. So there's been five seasons, but it's on Netflix. Um, pretty much, if you don't know what The Walking Dead is, I'm sure you've been living under a rock, but I will explain anyways. Um, basically, it's based off the comic books by Robert Kirkland. Um, and it's a TV show where you follow Rick Grimes. He's a sheriff in the normal world. And he goes into a coma because he gets shot in the arm. And while he's in this coma, it's kind of like 28 Days Later, where he's in this coma and the zombie apocalypse happens. And he wakes up in the hospital and his flowers are dead and he's going, what? What is going on here? Like, he's dehydrated, he looks like shit. Um, and he gets out of the hospital and it's just missing. Like nobody's around. And of course there's that iconic scene that don't open dead inside. Um, and so he kind of puts these things together that there's some weird shit going on. There's people eating people, there's dead people everywhere. And uh, basically, so yeah, you follow the story of him. He's trying to find his family. And it's just all these people that you learn to love in the show, all these characters. And it's like, as I said before, the other series, you learn their backstories and you learn where they were before, um, you know, the apocalypse hit and all these different things. But yeah, so you learn all these people's stories and all this stuff. And basically, you don't want to get attached to characters because it is a lot like Game of Thrones, where they're just fucking killing everybody off. The difference of characters between season one and season five is crazy. There's gore, there's zombies. If you love zombie movies, zombie shows, you have to watch Walking Dead. There's just nothing better. And they're constantly coming up with new zombies and they're deteriorating as the seasons progress. And there's water zombies and there's you know, people ripped in half, but they're still alive, and there's all this crazy stuff. You have to watch it. I'm obsessed with it, and I love it. So I want you guys to love it, too. So number one, this is hard because I love all these shows so much, but I feel like there hasn't been a show in a while that has made me so, like, immersed in its world, and that is Sons of Anarchy. Um, I know a lot of people are very hit or miss on Sons of Anarchy um, simply because people might be deterred because it's a this is a biker gang show. You know, if that's what you see it as, you're like, oh, there's a bunch of white boys on bikes. Like, why do I give a shit? Because that's a, originally what I thought. My dad saw the show, the first season, the first episode, he saw it and he was like, hey, this show looks good. Like, you should, we should watch it. And I was like, dad, I don't want to watch a biker gang show. Like, no, that's stupid, you know? I decided, okay, I'll give it a shot and we watched the first season and was hooked right away and let me just tell you if you don't like the first couple episodes you have to just get through the first season and you'll be hooked and you'll be hooked on these characters and you love these characters and it's just all this shit they go through and it's just amazing and I'm in love with Charlie Hunnam like everybody else says he's a great actor but um, he plays also another anti-hero he wants to be this good guy he wants to be this good man but he has these hard things because, you know, their MC is basically selling, you know, illegal guns, they're dealing with gangs, and you just follow the story of basically this man who, um, his dad was the president of the motorcycle club when it first began, and uh, he was the head guy, and he ended up dying when he was younger, and he, his stepdad, Clay, he steps in and he's the president, and so Jax is the vice president, and so he's kind of going head to head with him because, you know, Clay wants to move them more into like 
hardcore stuff to get easy money and Jax wants them to go more, you know, the good route and make their money in a decent way and not do illegal things and put their gang, their, their, their crew in trouble. It's a crazy power struggle. It's based off Hamlet. Um, I mean, it's, it's loosely based off Hamlet. Kurt Sutter wrote it. He's a genius. Love him. He's fucking crazy. He says the C word like it's nothing. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's loosely based off Hamlet. So as you will know from Hamlet, a lot of people die and it's devastating every time somebody dies. And uh, I don't think I've had a show that just made me like, oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> a really long time. Probably not since Something in Dexter and, and Walking Dead, which I'm not going to talk about. But um, it's amazing, it's it's action-packed, it's passion, it's brotherhood. It's just so much more than just the motorcycles, and that's like the thing that people have to get over. Um, these people are brothers, they're family, and uh, it's basically what this club kind of does to these people and what they're willing to risk and, and kind of give up to support the crew, and uh, it's great. Everybody's great. There's a there's a dirty cop. There's Gemma, which is Jack's mother, and she's kind of the matriarch of this whole entire motorcycle club. Katie Seagal is amazing as Gemma. I love her. People love to hate her. People love to love her, and it's just like she's just amazing in it. She actually won a Golden Globe for it, and I wish they won more awards, but they didn't for fucking whatever reason. But just watch it. Um, the series just ended last year, and it's it's been a wild ride, and I loved every second of it. And I have all them on DVD, and I have Sons of Anarchy thing hanging above my sink. Every time I wash my dishes, I'm looking at it. So it tells you how obsessed I am with it. Um, it's just great, and you have to watch it. And uh, yeah, so that's, that is my top 10 recommended binge watch shows. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure to follow me on Instagram at AmandaBrian1, or on Twitter, it's Amanda Lemon. And subscribe, hit that subscribe button. If you guys like more videos like this, let me know because I love sharing my nerdiness and obsession because like I have so many friends that are like, yeah, I like that show a lot, but you know, it's whatever. And I'm like, hey, die hard, oh, freaking out, like looking up memes, hashtag this, hashtag walking dead, you know, I'm ready to have like a fucking finale party tomorrow for this. So yeah, basically I'm just a crazy obsessive person. I'm very passionate about this kind of stuff, TVs, games, movies, all that. So if you guys are interested in me posting more stuff like this, let me know. And I uh, will see you guys next time. Bye.